Hello, welcome again. Today I'll be briefly explaining the term cartography, which is extremely important for post-colonial studies. So literally, of course, you're all probably already aware, cartography is the art and science of map making. But as a practice, it was inextricably linked with the practices and vocabularies of colonialism. Now think of it this way. If you are from a post-colonial nation, let's say from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and when you read your history books, how was the contact phase taught to you? Most of the times we learned that India was discovered by Vasco de Gama or by the Portuguese first and then discovered by the Spaniards and the English. So in all those instances, what we were internalizing that the colonies, the colonial spaces were these unknown spaces that were waiting patiently to be discovered by the Europeans sailors and European travelers. And that was giving a precedence to this act of discovery by the Europeans, even though the places had existed for thousands of years and had developed their own cultures. So cartography in the European imagination then was actually literally charting, mapping the globe. And in some of the maps, like at least two in history, the places that were not recorded were declared as dangerous. Sometimes the phrase here be dragons will be rendered there or figures of monsters will be on the map just to represent since this, since this is not yet mapped, not yet known, it's dangerous territory. So the act of mapping itself, the practice of it, the techniques of it are absolutely inextricably linked with the with the colonial exercise and colonial movement into these so-called unknown territories. Now what mapping also allowed the Europeans to do was to imagine these places which were in some cases highly inhabited, had sophisticated cultural and political systems to represent them as empty spaces. Remember that famous earlier part of Conrad's Heart of Darkness in which you know, Marlowe talks about the empty places in the world, right? So the idea that if you could represent a place as empty, as void of human life or culture on a map, then you could lay claim to it, right? You could actually say, this is uninhabited space. We're gonna go record it, chart it, figure out its mountains and all, and hence claim it. In the process of mapping, then the colonizers also got a chance to rename places, right? The places might have had their native names, but most of the times they are given names either with reference to whosoever so-called discovered them or whosoever recorded them and mapped them. So they get the chance to name places, which in so many cases overwrites the local history because the places obviously must have had their names in the local language. So the act of mapping and cartography is then connected to the colonial enterprise in creating, first of all, this idea of as if there are empty places in the world, which can be controlled and taken over by the discoverers, and then mapping them and making them available to the European audiences so that they could then use those maps to you know, launch their enterprises or directly rule those areas. So cartography was absolutely deeply connected with the imperial and colonial project. But there's another thing that happens in the process of recording and mapping the colonies or colonial spaces is that the colonizers introduce artificial boundaries on a piece of paper that then start defining the politics on the ground and launch so many conflicts that still go on. For example, sometimes the mapping divided integral communities into two based on the assumptions of the cartographers, 
right? Sometimes the maps were produced to implement the larger treaties that were made by the empire. For example, let's say the Durand Line, which is a disputed border between Afghanistan and Pakistan, is a disputed border because the Durand Line was drawn after uh, the British Afghan wars and it was kind of a ceasefire line but that's the border upon which Pakistan and Afghanistan are divided the Afghans of, of course contest that but that legacy that line that was drawn comes from the colonial mapping and from the colonial project then in so many cases when the colonizers leave the post-colonial nations that gain independence gain that independence according to the maps produced by the colonizers which sometimes divides communities or sometimes leaves these disputes behind for the post-colonial nation states to resolve so they're actually fighting over geography which had been overwritten by the colonial map making process and then the colonial administration so overall cartography wherever whenever we mention it literally means the mapping of the colonial spaces but also metaphorically it means dividing of native cultures overwriting of native cultures and leaving legacies of division right and po political distrust of one community against the other now if you look at africa uh, since so many of the borders drawn in Africa were unnatural and were administratively mapped by the colonial powers, uh, a lot of nation states in Africa are still contending against the maps right, and the actual territories that belong to one nation or the other between India and Pakistan. The map of Kashmir is a huge um, bone of contention because the Indians when they map it they map it as part of their own territories the Pakistanis can take can contain it within their own nation state or often sometimes represented as a disputed territory the same is the case with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict on mapping of a space and what belongs to Israel, what belongs to the Palestinians. So overall cartography literally means mapping of the colonial space and then that mapping enables the colonizers to divide people into different geographical areas and to overwrite their local geographies with the geographical understanding of the region as imposed by the colonizers and leaves the post colonies with a lot of territorial, perceptual and political problems. That's my brief explanation of the term. I hope it is helpful. Um, if you like what I post here, please do subscribe and I will continue producing these brief videos. And thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, see you next time.